The Racing Pod on Off The Ball with William Hill. Best odds guaranteed on all Irish and UK racing. 18 plus. See gamblingcare.ie. And you're welcome to episode 10 of The Racing Pod on Off The Ball with John Duggan and Johnny Ward. Remember, we're here every Friday with analysis, race previews, tips, stories, interviews and crack. The first half of the pod each week free to air. The second part exclusively for members. So be sure to sign up by going to offtheball.com forward slash join. For members this week, we'll preview Navin on Saturday, Lingfield on Sunday, and look ahead to the big one at Goran Park next Thursday, the highest as Chase. So subscribe now for all the juicy info. Johnny, how are you? Good, JD. Ascot and Haydock off this weekend due to the cold snap. Luckily, it seems that Navin and Thurlis will survive. Yeah, and... Um... Navin having an inspection now, which is a little bit of a concern, but, you know, major drying out uh, throughout the night. Um, just thinking on this the other day, Ireland's gotten away with very few actual Pretty cancellations. Pretty much we've Very, got away very few. It. Like, I was thinking of Nace. Nace's big day was really disappointing for Nace. They still ran the Lawlers, though. Yeah, and they ran practically the whole car. Yeah. They ran it, I think there might have been 1,500 people, give or take, there for free entry Friday. And um, it was just disappointing. But other than that, like, we've had very few cancellations, whereas... British racing has been decimated, like really, really badly. And I do feel for them over there, mainly mainly because of rain, but the frost has gotten in. The Clarence House was shaping up to be an absolute belter. Um, I presume we'll have jockey changes for Paul Townend now at Navin tomorrow, whatever. But um, yeah, it's the weather has just become a big, big problem. You record this on a Friday. I was going through social media and I saw you were on racing TV speaking to Paul Carberry and his mother. Oh, yeah, that was... Uh, that was it, was it was a kind of a funny day. The Dan Moore on... Saturday at Fairy House. Um, there weren't that many people there. Um, there might have been people going to a funeral that evening and racing, but it was a small enough crowd. It was very cold as well, obviously. And uh, Dan Moore and Joan Moore would be Paul Carberry's uh, grandmother and Pamela uh, Moore, now Pamela Carberry's uh, mother and father. Um, so got to talking, to talking to them. Hadn't seen Paul Carberry in a long time. Just There's something about Paul Carberry that um, you just feel like it's just an anachronism. It's not coming back. There's never going to be another Paul Carberry. Like, he was just... I'd have to say, like, my favourite jockey changed from time to time, but he's the one jockey, when I think of him, he just makes me smile. That's, he's, he's going to be a kid forevermore. He was the quintessential, how can you tell the dancer from the dance? How do you tell the artist from the art? How do you tell the jockey from the horse? The jockey and Paul Carberry... And the, the horse and Paul Carberry were always in fusion, and um, it was great to talk to him. He's doing well, and he's injured at the moment, so not that much has changed. He is... Such a natural, mm. and it's in his blood, obviously, with his father and mother and everything. But I think he's still hunting. I think he's still riding horses. Yeah. He's riding out for Gavin Cromwell, mm. which I was interested. To, I picked that up and go, oh, you're you're helping out Gavin Cromwell. Yeah, um, he was injured in. I think he was riding a horse Tony Martin when he was when his last ride. But he had um, he quite broken up from injury and. It was sad to see him go, and it really was a golden generation. We don't we don't have those characters around either. Like when when you think it was. He was there with sort of Ruby, Barry Garrity, Tony McCoy, Davy Russell. I got into a race and say 20, 21 years ago. Carberry was kind of in his pomp. Well, you're from the area where Bobby Joe came out of. Yeah. Because I remember 1999. See, Ireland hadn't had the Grand National winner at Aintree since 1975. And then in, at, wow. a, at Aintree. So 24 wow. years. And then Bobby Joe had won the Irish National the previous year. Gets in off 10 stone in the Aintree Grand National. Paul Carberry riding for his dad, Tommy. And the horse delivered. And then I, I remember trying Paul Carberry trying to hang off the rafters when that's lying. Were you there that day? No, I wasn't. No, no I, I was only at the National once in 02. But yeah. that, that would, to me, was the first sign of this is turning Ireland's way. Then you had the following year with Ruby and Ted and Papillon. And it, it just it, a real family affair. Bobby Joe, a uh, huge plunge in him, got down to 10 to 1. And Paul Carberry, for me, was the head waiter. Uh, sometimes it didn't work and it was no fault on, on his part that Harty Ball didn't win the champion hurdle. I don't think he could have anything done everything differently. There was a horse called, Bel called Belvano. He mm. won at Cheltenham on that the That was Grand mentioned in, in light oh, of... Yeah. Unbelievable. Like, it just The Lero G of Steel to just hold on to the horse in a two-mile chase and deliver him at the last and win. Belvano's probably the one I think that gets mentioned more than any and um, like Bobby Joe I was just looking there his previous win which was probably a warm up for entry he won off 86 over hurdles you can imagine <laughs> it's a different game I think he was well out of the handicap at entry if I remember rightly but it was a different race then but Carberry for me like JD I got into racing in I, I'm not going to lie I went to the bookies in college because I was bored and there was bookies beside me in Whitehall and in those days the betting shops we'll talk about the betting ring actually yeah. later on but the betting shops were 
really vibrant places. Like, And I do video kill the radio star. The internet has killed an awful lot. And betting shops are just not what they were. And people might look down on betting shops and they might look down on betting, but... The shop that I went in, Whitehall, um, it was just full of characters. Like, and a lot for for some of the old people, they went in to meet people and to have a little bit. Yeah. You get you get your cup of coffee. That's what my dad did. My dad, and he's, yeah. he's passed since so 2002, but uh, when I was quite young, but he 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 would know all the characters. They'd all know him. Yeah, he'd know the local bookie who's recently passed, David Highland and Ballybrack. Oh yeah, uh, and, yeah, and chat exactly. away. Davy Highland from another era. As yeah, well. and 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 the the bookies that in the ring would take a bet, like, and be mm. a man about it and would be looking to restrict accounts or anything like that. But, yeah, and, and, and Grand National Day, and you see the characters, see the same people, and obviously some people spend too much time in there. Yeah. Um, but it, it is an, a bygone area, and it's just an area that's gone. Well, from... So this is a very long way of me telling the story. That I, when, when I was back in a horse, and Paul... You'd be watching in the bookies, and, like, you'd have a couple of quid each way or whatever it was in college, but it would matter to you because you were in college. And Paul Carberry was like a computer game. He just starts scything through the field. Yeah. And you just get this, like, I remember my heart had started to beat harder when you'd see, God, Paul Paul could be on something here. And you'd see him, like, what has this horse gotten left? And uh, I just fell in love with his way of riding. And the one that always sticks out for me, I did I did a 20 quid treble one day. I was working in Satanta. Call Bewley's or Bewley's Berry. Now, I, I can't remember which one was one of the horses. Um, and I can't remember what the third one was, but the first one was Loyal Focus. And Dermot Well was trained, and it was a horse off the flat. Carby was riding in Fairy House and it was like probably this time of year first race a little bit like Fairy House last Saturday could even be the same meeting and um, he won the race um, on the bridle in a photo finish right he literally was told deliver Paul Thermowell said deliver him late Paul don't take it up too early and he kind of half missed the last hurdle he was taken on a horse trained by Mike, the late Michael O'Brien called Majlis and uh, he missed the last and he kind of eased off the horse and one moment I was like is this horse gone wrong is he going to pull him up and then he kind of just nudged him up to get up on the line on the bridle, but it wasn't clear that he'd actually won. And I was like, what actually happened there? And Paul Carberry came in and Thurman <laughs> Well goes, what was that about? And, and basically his answer was, well, you told me to leave it late. <laughs> Can you imagine getting a horse up by like that? Like yeah. literally that on the bridle. If you got that wrong... The, before the days of social media and but people would be just rubbish. talking through their pockets and giving out to you the race but, course which would be wrong but, but, no but if he got this wrong it was the most ridiculous thing ever because he knew he was on the best horse but he couldn't have been more audacious well, well, and I, yeah. I, sadly I can't get the video of it online anymore it was it was the most ballsy is the word I can think of ridiculous ride I've ever seen and I still every time I meet him on a preview night I laugh about that ride he was an absolute genius on a horse and if you're talking of horse men and horse women he was there's never been anything like knowing where the line is mm. and a flat jockey's are very good at it as well you see Frankie de Tori you see Frankie at the Breeders, Breeders Cup, Cup yeah. and what is he in his 50s they, they, they do the jockey cam on it mm. and just to because the way we look at a race and the way a jockey rides in a race is completely different obviously sometimes you're in a front runner you don't mm. know what's behind you you're just hearing things you're trying to look through colours and to be able to know where the line is after a mile and a half or whatever it's just it's a skill and an art that and you, you might be quite feeling quite light because you've been in the sauna Mm. for the last 24 hours. Paul Carberry at the time around the turn of the century ran a lot for Noel Mead. Noel Mead was a champion trainer back then. As so we gave him, a, gave him a lot of ammunition we still had to deliver and um, there's just a, a, a wild Irishness to the man. Oh, completely. But you see, Paul had a, had a reputation for being a bit of a party boy but yeah. he actually wasn't and isn't. He, well, Paul has a bit of madness in him but when Paul would go out like he'd go out but it wasn't like he was in the boozer every day. Nothing like that. He wasn't like that at all. He was just like he's wild and like he's wild in a very good natural way. Like he was always injured out hunting and getting hit by a stag and all this madness. Yeah. Um, but you know the funny thing was like I, I don't think I'd ever actually met Pamela before and I, I always thought of the Carberries like how did how did the matriarch and the patriarch manage all these kids who were riding horses doing every bit of development going um, and rear, rear them not only so well but to be so talented and she's this absolute ladylike quality about her. And there was a funny moment where um, Paul said, I'm, I'm like Dad. You know, Dad was quiet, or quiet during the day anyway. And Pamela just goes, what? <laughs> and she goes, you got to beware of the quiet ones. And Tommy Carberry, obviously, like, you know, he was he was such a rider in his day. And um, he kind of, he lost his sight towards the end. But um, the... You know, she had such a vital role in that family. And I, it's funny enough, Nina's now the most famous of them all. And 1975, the last year before Bobby Joe was written by Tommy Carberry. Yeah. 
So there is a brilliant link. You have to remember as well, like, and I, I was reflecting on this with some sadness last Saturday as Fairy House, like, you know, I, it's just there weren't that many people there because, again, um, phones and TV, people don't need to go racing, but, like, this is that absolute home of racing, like Meath, the Royal County, great land, great horses. And in those days, Ireland didn't have many winners in Cheltenham and it was a real, like, the fairy house to hunt around the area, the Ward Union hunt, and it was a real social gathering and sadly we are losing that. Reid and Tommy Wrong, Banbridge, Maureen were the three I picked out last weekend. Did you pick out anything from last weekend that worth following? Um, what did I pick out from last weekend? Reid and Tommy Wrong beat Eel Atlantic and um, uh, quite an amazing story. The sire of, of um, Reid and Tommy Wrong is authorised and authorised won the derby under yes, Frankie, Frankie Tory, wasn't yeah. it? Trained by it's Michael Bell. No, it wasn't um, Michael. It was a Peter, Peter Chappelheim. Chappelheim. Yeah. M- Michael Bell trained Motivator. That's I often, right, yeah. mixed the two of them up. Both mot- both Majus. Authorised was basically a disappointing stallion and he sort of got national hunt horses more by, sort of, not really by design. Was sent off to Turkey and now he's been brought back to Ireland to stand as a national hunt stallion and he's gotten a couple of good winners but to have a grade one horse just after that, I think he's going to get some nice mares but good performance but I thought he let Lantic who was second Real chase and type. I thought he excelled himself. He was just done on the line. Um, I think he'll be very good on softer ground. One of the best races I've seen over the last six to eight weeks was this race because I thought they did a really good gallop. A lot of horses that were talked about as potential stars in October, um, Firefox and Croke Park were put in their place. I think Il Atlantique, they should put him back and trip to two miles possibly for the Supreme Novice Hurdle, maybe a bit more of a speedy race. Uh, but this reading Tommy Wrong, showed a lot of resolution. Um, went a decent gallop as I said I think he'll possibly get further and I think the hill at Cheltenham will pose no problems for him really impressed to see Banbridge win on a seasonal reappearance he's good Vinny yeah. Conti has to have good ground but if he gets good ground in the Ryanair chase it'll be hard to beat and Maureen who uh, Molly, Molly's mate is the mother a half sister to the legendary Faheen I mean you don't know how good this horse is going to be Maureen uh, really bolted up under Patrick Mullins on Monday point of 10 yeah well the thing about Maureen, like, there's, there's, a, there's a lot going on here. I presume she's kind of named after one of the great matriarchs, Maureen Mullins, who is absolutely incredible. Like, still, as far as I know, still going racing, you know, long after um, her husband Paddy died, but an amazing woman altogether. But I presume she's named after him, or her other. But she looks an awful lot like Faheen. The markings on her face really, really like Faheen. And she's by Walk in the Park as well. Yes, so the, the, the um, Bit easy to bet on this on the track, but did it really well. And... Uh, Gordon Elliott has some very nice bumper horses as well. He unveiled um, do, 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 uh, Julio... Julio... I'll, I'll remember the name. The horse that won on Saturday at Fairy House. Yeah, um, it was a Romeo Coolio. Romeo Coolio. Yeah. Who kind of... Uh, in he, the black and white colours. Wasn't overly impressive, but I think in a stronger gallop, he's going to be very good going forward. He, he actually might have stronger bumper horses than Willie this season. Joystick is one, I think, that mm. impressed me at Christmas for Willie Mullins. I think if you're bringing a horse to Chatham for the bumper, it's a rough race. It's three-mile chasers in the making. I think you need to have a bit of grit and a bit of toughness about you. Yeah. Willie Joystick kind of showed that for me at Christmas. Joystick's possibly one to watch. And Plutar retired this week. Uh, the amazing stab at this horse. Never won consecutive races in a row, mm. which was interesting. But so versatile. Beat Chuck and Braswan at two mile, uh, grade one at Leperstown at Christmas. Won the Savills Chase at three mile, Leperstown at Christmas. Um, won a Betfair Chase at Haydock over three miles. And then won the Gold Cup, three and a quarter mile race in 2022 by 15 lengths under Rachel Blackmore the longest margin since Master Oates in 1995. So a French bred, they generally tend to mature at a younger age, but a great trend performance a couple of years ago to send out a Plutard under Rachel Blackmore from Henry de Bramhead and win the Gold Cup. And Rachel Blackmore that day was brilliant, I felt. Put the horse to sleep and was able to pick off Manila Indo, the previous year's winner, uh, as they went to the last. So happy retirement to Plutard. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, some horses, he lost his way. It's got to, it's, it must be said, but, you know, amazingly versatile. Give Darrow O'Keefe... Um, the best day of his career so yes. far, you know. That was an amazing race, really. That because... race was a, an, a war of attrition. It was a mm. brilliant race. And, and th- I think it left a mark on a Plutar that season. Yeah, it possibly did. Like, and, and, and in fairness, that day, Dara, you're on a horse that's not certain to stay. And, like, he, again, you're talking about judging where the line is. He couldn't have judged it better. Um, I suppose maybe the, he didn't win the strongest Gold Cup in the world, maybe in fairness, you, you could say. But um, it's good that he's retired. And, um, you know, connections of two very interesting runners in the, the big race, Thurlis, uh, uh, Sunday, which we'll talk about. The Betty Ring, we just talked about it there at the start. Where is it at at 2024? Because it's just a case of smartphones have killed it, uh, aside from the big festivals, or are there more factors at play? I was just going through the stats here. 2007, 
uh, on course bookmaker turnover, 202 million euro. Half of last year, the first half of last year, 32 million from HRI released that from the uh, the bookies on track. If you double that, say, it's 64 million, about a third. Uh, the intrigue seems to have gone on the general days. Now, I'm going to go on on Thursday for the Thiasis chase. I'm sure there you'll have the intrigue, the bit of fun of having a fiver with a, a bookie shopping around, getting the best price. But have things changed uh, with the whole smartphone thing, is that the only reason you can explain why it, it's 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 dropped as a pastime, as it were? Well, it's not the only reason because um, the betting ring at the dog track is dead, and the, the the exchanges have almost nothing to do with greyhound racing in terms of the live show. So for the derby um, and the odd sort of race going up to the derby. Shelburne Park is alive, but in those famous college days, I would it'd be apt for me just to go up to Harold's Cross on a midweek night board. And sadly enough, I live near it now, and the track is closed. But the the betting ring was on a on a Wednesday at Harold's Cross, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, would be buzzing. And I, that was my recollection. So it's gone in greyhound racing, in 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 horse racing. I actually think, in sporting terms, it's a tragedy what the betting ring is is compared to. So like. The betting ring is now basically someone just tap, tap, tap on the exchanges, betting exchanges, having a bet online. There's no colour in it. There's no fun in it. You don't know who's betting. You don't know what's going on. And in the days of J.P. McManus and Freddie Williams or whatever, where you'd have somebody in the betting ring and everyone like, this is the problem with racing now. Because the betting ring is dead, um, much of the excitement and the weight and all of that is is redundant. So you're kind of waiting for the race, but the rest of the time you're killing time. That's why a lot of people don't go racing. The bet, if the betting ring is is just um, a shadow of what it was, what's the point? Because that was such an important. So in the day, of. somebody could have had a huge bet on, and it would have moved the market. Is everybody moving massively? Or, uh, I'm scrambling around and that kind of thing. Yeah, and you'd be looking around and like say the big players in the ring, like Graham's or whatever. Like, and you'd be looking what what's what's Sean Graham doing, and and you'd be looking what's the best price here, and it was just a constant like on guard. It's like kind of a you know looking out for snipers really in the betting ring. And you'd see this massive move, and all of a sudden people would start running like in the stock exchange. Something's really happening here. You know, JP might have had 200 grand on a horse, something for all we know. He might have had 50 grand each way, and they have to lay off the bets. And all this excitement, that's gone now. So, Is it, is it still there for the festivals? Punchestown, Galway, no? It, it, in, in, in fairness, in fairness, the, you know, I speak to Ray Mulvaney regularly. He would be one of the biggest sort of players left in Ireland. And he would say the exchange, the festivals are holding up well. But there's still no real life in it. And the intrigue, yeah. It, it's, the, the gambles are no longer really happening on track, or yeah, certainly not yeah. as much. And, you know, the internet is, is amazing. Like, it, 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 you know, you're never really bored. It's always offering you something. But it has killed so much of the joy of life. And part of that joy is having a bet in the betting ring or the betting shop. Part of that joy is seeing the reaction of the bookmaker, not having a bet online in some faceless operation. Yeah. And, you, you know, as well as that, JD, it was... It was um, it's it's just sad when Davy Highland died. You mentioned Davy Highland. Davy Highland died at a time when the betting ring, of which he was such a big part, was nothing like what it was. And people might think I'm I'm overegging it here, but I'm I'm genuinely not. And I'm actually came late in that era. Okay, two races to preview the weekend at Thurlis on Sunday. The Grade Two Kerry Glass Irish EBF Mares Novice Chase One Hundred Five. Um, the racetrack is is holding up well. There's probably going to be a deluge of rain, so I'd expect to be softer ground than the, what we possibly have now. I think. Uh, Hotier Ear will win this. Uh, I really was impressed visually by her at Christmas at Limerick. I think she really absolutely hammered the field on heavy ground and perhaps the penny's dropping with her. I think she'll win. Do you disagree? Do you agree? <sighs> See, I, 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 I don't know what to make of the race in the sense that she she was very good when she beat Harmonia Maker at Limerick. Um, but surely that wasn't Harmonia Maker's form. It was... I was there that day. It was what... Um, Two two miles six. Sorry, I wasn't there. It was the day after. I was there later at Limerick, but it was two miles six on um, really heavy ground. And I don't think the Elliot runner ran her race. And if you go back to if you look at Harmonia Maker, she slammed Brandy Love at Gorn. Granted, that form has been let down a bit since. But the run behind Silent Approach, who runs since Harmonia Maker was behind Silent Approach, that Hauterier was um, sent off five to one, when Harmonia Maker was six to five. Way, way more fancied. And she beat her well that day. And Thurlis ground is Thurlis was kind of called Ireland's all weather track before the dog came uh, into play. And the ground is going to be as much as it's it's going to rain. I'd say after all the drying we have, they're calling yielding. Do you have a selection? Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to go with actually Harmonia Maker at the prices. I think she right. can bounce back. Okay, the other one we're looking at the Grade Two Horse and Jockey Hotel Chase, one thirty-five Thurlis Sunday, two and a half miles. Look at the feel for this. Envoy Alan Alaho appreciated. 
Cabo Dano, French Dynamite and Statler. Who'd you like? Brilliant race. William Hill isn't top price on Envoy Allen, so um, but have a look around. See, I think Envoy Allen here is a bit of value. Um, it's funny him and uh, Aloha, they're both 10-year-olds now, making me feel a little bit old. Chievely Park stood colours, the colours of Aplute Heart. Yeah, and Chievely Park, you'd, for, you'd forget, like, we're, we're, we're with Gordon Elliott and obviously then moved uh, moved on, but that was the benefit of others. Envoy Allen was, was the horse that they thought so much of. I, I really thought he did next to nothing wrong at Down Royal. Um, just touched off on the line and uh, I think on his day I still sort of feel he's better over this sort of trip and I actually thought Aloha was a bit disappointed in the King George Yes I would agree with you It's a hard race as well Also I, I, he was off for a long time with an injury mm. I wonder is he as good as he was when he was sensational in 2022 Aloha mm. appreciate it once again does he need to be fresh a top run to be second in the John Durkin but tailed off at Leopardstown Cabodano the youngest horse in the race but is he a naturally uh, as, as a chaser is he a natural he's not out of it on the, no, on, he's the, on the ground horse. Yeah, he's not out of it he's only 8 he's only, it's, uh, it's strange. French Dynamite was second mm. in the race last year fourth in the Ryanair Chase Chatham hard to place but he might be fresher than some of these Statler can't have uh, Alaho I, 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 I just don't know if he's as good as he was uh, and Envoy Allen I would agree with you must be on the shortest incredible training performance to win that Ryanair Chase at Chatham last year one of the best training performances you've ever seen from Henry de Bromhead second behind Jerry Colomb is is this is a good trip. I think he's fresh. He is 10, but I think I would agree with you. He'll be my selection. I, I think he's knocked a fair bit because a bit like Sam Crow, um, probably more than Sam Crow, he was really billed to be like this, the, the next big thing. And okay, for, maybe he wasn't, but like I think you can make excuses for him. A gore on the ground was really, really bad. And what did he do wrong at Down Royal? And travelled great, jumped, jumped powerfully. He's a horse with a lot of speed. Um, just goes to show as well, Jiddy. You don't need grade ones all the time. This is a grade two when it's it's a proper, proper race. So, make man a double GA. We were poor last week. I was speaking too many horses last week, so apologies for anybody in the members. Less section. is more. Less often. is more sometimes. Yeah. And we, we, we had a great run at the start of the racing pods. So we're only 10 episodes in. We've had 20 to 1 winners. Um, we've had 18 to 1 winners, 10 to 1 winners. So, keep the faith. What is your selection for the weekend? I'm going to go for Envo, Alan. Uh, for the weekend, I'll give one at Navin. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, I will give I've, I've put up a couple of horses um, so give us one give, give the other one to the members yeah I'll, I'll give um, do, 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 do. this is running in release the beast the 1245 I, I'm a forgiving type JD bombed out the last day but retains plenty of uh, potential and is going to be a much bigger price ok so this is at Navin on Saturday 1245 Johnny release the beast Paul Nolan trains in Wexford Sean Flanagan will ride and that is Johnny's selection for the Make Man a Double J. My one is Envoy Allen for Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore. Wouldn't disagree with 135 Turles on Sunday. This is the Racing Pod and Off the Ball. If you're listening to the free version of the podcast, we'd be leaving you here. But if you're looking for more, including our analysis of Saturday's action at Haydock, Sunday's Fair at Lingfield, and look ahead to Thursday's Thiesta's Chase at Goran Park, go to offtheball.com forward slash join to subscribe and get the full podcast every Friday with all our racing tips, insights and stories from the week's action. The Racing Pod on Off The Ball with William Hill. Best odds guaranteed on all Irish and UK racing. 18 plus. See gamblingcare.ie.